You only need to take protein on days you train, right? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name is Richie Kerwin and today we're going to talk all about something a lot of people get confused about. Protein timing and distribution. Let's get started. Just before we get into it, I just want to mention that I'm not talking just about protein supplements or powders in this video. I'm gonna be talking about protein in general. So that includes protein from your food, like meat, eggs, fish, dairy products, tofu, and other vegetarian protein sources. Remember, you should always try and improve your nutrition by focusing on your food first. That said, protein powders and shakes can be a really easy and convenient way to increase your protein intake and frequency. And I'm gonna explain why that's important. Okay. So to make this video as easy to understand and direct as possible, I'm going to talk about taking protein with just one goal in mind, and that's building muscle. Or as the fancy pants like to call it, hypertrophy. And in reality, if you're watching this channel, there's a good chance that that's what you're interested in too. Now, whenever someone finds out I'm a nutritionist, you know, in the real world, I always get grilled on nutrition questions. And one of the most common is, am I getting enough protein? Well, I'm not psychic. So when I ask if they take a protein powder, the most common answer is, yeah, sure, on days I work out, right after the gym, and that's it. Now, don't get me wrong, it's great to take protein powder or to increase your protein intake after training, but with a little planning, most people can get much better results from it, which is what we're gonna talk about here. So, everyone loves to talk about how much protein you should get in a day, and don't get me wrong, that's super important, but so is something called protein distribution, which is when you take your protein during the day. You probably already know you should be getting somewhere between 1.6 and 2.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight if building muscle is your goal. And before I go any further, if you have no idea how much protein you're getting at the moment and want to find out, download a free calorie tracking app, almost any will do, and track your food for a few days. Knowing how much you're eating now is the first step in figuring out if you need to eat more or not. Now, assuming you're eating enough protein, you're good, right? Well, not so fast. Most people have an uneven protein distribution during the day. What that means is that breakfast tends to be the lowest protein meal of the day because most people focus on things like toast, cereal, or fruit. Lunch tends to have a little more protein and dinner is usually the most protein heavy meal of the day. To build muscle, the most important thing you can do besides training hard in the gym is stimulating muscle protein synthesis or MPS. And we do this by eating enough protein. To stimulate MPS enough, we need to get enough protein at each meal. And that works out at around 0.4 to 0.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per meal. As a general rule of thumb, for a 70 to 80 kilogram person, that works out at about 30 to 40 grams of protein per meal. And here's the thing, eating more than that doesn't increase MPS. So eating crazy amounts of protein in one meal won't make up for not stimulating MPS enough in your other meals. That's why it's a good idea to evenly distribute your protein over all of your meals. So think of it like this. If you're currently getting 10 grams of protein with your breakfast, 20 grams with your lunch, and 60 grams with your dinner for a total of 90 grams a day, you're only maximally stimulating MPS once at dinner time. So to improve distribution, you could increase protein at breakfast and lunch and reduce it a little at dinner so you're getting at least 30 grams in each meal. That's a good way to improve protein distribution. That's the first step. You can also increase the number of meals you have a day to further stimulate MPS. So say you train immediately after work. After you train, you could have a protein shake with 30 to 40 grams of protein, and that will stimulate MPS again. Then you wait a few hours and have your dinner, another chance to stimulate MPS and muscle growth. And if four meals are good, maybe more meals could be better. This is where planning is going to be really important. We know that after we stimulate MPS, we have to wait a certain amount of time before we can start it again by eating more protein. This is called the refractory period, and it lasts about three hours. That means that technically, we could restart MPS with a dose of protein every three hours or so. Assuming you sleep for a solid eight hours, which you should be doing, by the way, if you want to build muscle, that means you can probably fit in six protein doses, one every three hours, while you're awake. And we do have some evidence that this much protein might be necessary in young bodybuilders to maximize muscle growth. And finally, another point about protein for everyone that only takes protein on the days they train. We know that weight training increases MPS. We also know that you can further increase MPS after weight training by eating enough protein. And we also know that the effect on MPS from weight training can last for up to between 24 and even 48 hours. That means for up to two days after you've trained, 
your muscles are primed to take advantage of more protein. So if you were trying to get the absolute maximum muscle protein synthesis from the moment you finish your gym session, you could eat some protein every three hours or so and get benefits. And that can be food or protein powder for convenience. Now, eating every three hours or so is not for everyone. But even if you are getting four high protein meals or shakes a day, even on days you don't train, that is putting you in a much better place to build muscle than if you just have a shake after your workout. Personally, I think four meals a day is a good balance between optimizing muscle growth and having an actual life that doesn't revolve around your food schedule. So what do you think? Did that clear up the protein confusion? As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.